So what's lens therapy? What's neurofeedback? What's biofeedback? Do they relate? Are they connected in any way? I've been asked this question a lot. I thought it was a good idea to put together a short little video explaining it. I hope this helps. Hi everyone, my name is John Stewart Hoppers and welcome. I am a certified lens practitioner as well as the founder of NeuroBalance in Los Angeles. I'm also a lens technician at HeartWise Fitness and Longevity Center under the direction of Howard K. Elkin, board certified holistic cardiologist and anti-aging longevity doctor. The short answer is yes, they're all interrelated and they're all connected. But I think the best place to start is biofeedback because it's been around the longest. It first began in about 1950s throughout the 60s as well. And uh, it's any medical device, technique, or system out there that whose aim is to feed an organism information so that that organism can learn and self-regulate. The idea behind it is to provide an alternate way that someone could benefit from this without taking any drugs, without medication. Biofeedback affords a person the system that can be put in place that they can better control their heart rate, their perspiration, their pulse, their heartbeats, their blood pressure. And what they did in the 50s, the 1950s and 1960s, is that they were preoccupied with cortisol, the master stress hormone, and what it played in these systems of the body, the respiratory and the circulatory system, and how it negated a person from performing optimally to the best of their ability. They noticed that stress played a big part and as time went on, technology advanced and the way of recording the data and uh, retrieving it and um, the feedback itself got better and people got better because of it and, and improved. And the way they did it and performed it got more far reaching and more flexible. So there's so many different types of biofeedback. And one of the main types of biofeedback is neurofeedback. Now neurofeedback is also called EEG biofeedback. EEG stands for electrocyclogram, or it's brain biofeedback, okay? Um, it is a clinically driven computer to brain or brain to computer interfacing, okay? Um, and it's again, it's a way to self-regulate and teach and promote new growth of certain areas within your brain. It's, it's the study of the patterns of energy that sweep through the human brain and how it correlates to function as opposed to um, the specifics of neuroanatomy or brain structures. It's designed to, again, promote healing through teaching and through leading the brain through a series of programs, if you will, that will allow the brain to learn from itself and self-regulate these systems and give it an alternative to medications. So we don't have to take drugs. And it's very universally applicable to a lot of mental health issues that we deal with today. In general, neurofeedback involves uh, hooking a client up to a laptop or a computer somehow, um, and it involves working on a couple sites, and um, there's usually monitors or lights or sounds or something um, that's connected with it. So this form of neurofeedback, this traditional or classic neurofeedback, this teaching type of neurofeedback, is the oldest type of neurofeedback that we have. Uh, it began in the 1970s, and uh, it's still being used today. There's many, many types, uh, but they're all basically teaching 
types of neural feedback. They condition your brain uh, and to re-educate and to reorganize through what we call and refer to as operant conditioning. It's basically the same way that you like teach a pet, <laughs> teach your dog to do tricks or something. It's, it's almost like uh, 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 by reward, you're rewarded by using these devices to help you know when you are in a certain brainwave frequency that's beneficial to you. The other type of neural feedback, the one that I'm involved in, is called LENS, and it stands for Low Energy Neural Feedback System. And it was first developed by Dr. Len Oakes, a clinical psychologist, um, in 1990, like I said, and um, he was trying to build a better mousetrap. He was trying to reduce the number of sessions it took for patients to get better. Um, he saw the strengths of the traditional neural feedback and he saw the weaknesses of it. And he thought by experimentation, what would happen if we changed how the brain responded to the incoming feedback by not following the technician, but following the brain, coming up with a system that was streamlined more that who implemented a different technique in which it was disruptive in nature. It disrupted patterns, maladaptive pathological self-defensive mechanisms that our bodies get involved in when there's stress and trauma involved in our life, as opposed to learning and training it in a, in a way. Although we've been around for 30 years, it still represents the most cutting edge way of dealing with neurofeedback. It expanded the definition of it and what you could do with it, the flexibility of it. We use it all over our body. You can use it in different areas of your body, um, not just on your whole cerebral cortex. Um, the way traditional neurofeedback works is that it usually zones in on targets, certain specific sites, and it works on those for a long time. Lens is totally different. Lens works on your whole cerebral cortex to try to balance it harmonically and harmoniously, hemispherically, if you will, the whole thing by working on maps. We work with maps that give us a repair route to follow based on the proprietary software that we use. So lens involves the resetting of the physiology that perpetuates the dysfunction by administering a perplexing and disruptive feedback, a gentle type feedback, low energy type feedback into the brain where it targets maladaptive frozen brainwave states, the one that become defensive mechanisms, ones that don't respond well to anything. And what happens that's called, it's referred to as neural gridlock. And it helps to break this apart over time. Get right to the problem, directly get right to the problem and readminister this and kind of help facilitate, facilitate changes in there. So what happens? In short, the sessions are shorter. Treatment is shorter. You need less treatments. It gets so you because you're bypassing the conscious area of your brain, you don't have to learn it. You don't learn it, you don't do anything. Lens is very passive. It's really good for children. That's what makes it really good for kids who, who don't want to sit really long. Lens sessions are very short as opposed to traditional neurofeedback. Traditional neurofeedback, like I said, takes 30 minutes to an hour a few times a week. Lens, you can come in once a week, sometimes twice a week, and the lens sessions take minutes to get them done. You can get them done 15, 20 minutes, sometimes two or three minutes, depending on what the nature of the problem is. Like I said, it's called low energy because it's really low, the energy. It's anywhere from, I heard from 400 to 1,000 times weaker than the battery on your cell phone. 
Um, so it gets in there really deep and it works really well with your own bioelectrical make a lot of the old guard neural feedback people who have been in it for 30 years uh, who work on other systems always use lens now because it's got greater possibility it's more flexible for a myriad of, of other uh, of all the uh, mental uh, health conditions that you can think of we use it for for everything uh, ADD ADHD uh, autism headaches traumatic brain injury a lot of traumatic brain injury it works really well with that headaches migraines um, bipolar fibromyalgia um, a lot of conditions, a lot of anxiety, a lot of panic attacks. Works great for that. The average number of sessions it takes for improvement is about 12, 11 or 12 for most things, unless you have early childhood trauma um, or ADD or uh, autism, sometimes traumatic brain injury, those can take a little bit more, but you're improving along the way all the time. Um, as far as what you feel and how long it takes before you start noticing these difference in the changes, some people feel it after the first session. Most people, I'd say, feel it after, let's say, two to four sessions, they feel it. I also say we are operating at about 90% success rate meaning that clients who come in who are complaining about their most problematic symptoms have a greatly reduced or completely eliminated those symptoms 90% of the time. So we're pretty proud and happy about that. And I think some of that success we get is due to the fact that we're in a network of the best doctors, practitioners, and other therapists who use the same type of technology. So that helps us because we share treatment protocols and applications and we kind of learn from each other. Uh, like I said before, it's very clinically driven. So that really helps to ensure greater results and better success. Other than that, all our equipment's FDA approved. Uh, we're HIPAA compliant, so we don't share any personal information. And we are also um, have treated over a million clients to date uh, with over 14 million sessions. And uh, we're, on, we're actually in 28 countries, I think, throughout the world and in almost every major city in the United States, with the exception of several. Well, who's a good candidate for this? Almost anybody. Uh, young children, I've worked on children who are four years old, and I've worked on uh, elderly people who are 85 years old. So after a short phone conversation, minute or two, I can tell if you're a good candidate or not. Um, I want to see you improve as fast as you can with the least amount of sessions and the least amount of time. That's really my goal, is to turn you in and turn you out the best I can, as, as quickly as I can. Most of the clients I see uh, have problems with anxiety, have problems with depression, panic attacks, um, post-traumatic stress, and trauma. I can say that 100% of my clients have gotten better from their trauma, uh, post-traumatic stress. Um, it creates what I call, and I've told them all this too, uh, an emotional cushion like this big fluffy pillow that gets in front of you, that it just doesn't get inside. Things don't bother you uh, as much, as bad, as deeply uh, as it did. It's not as debilitating. Um, you don't have to revisit those, those, painful, er, those painful memories again. Uh, it creates distance from it, which they all love. And I love too. Brain injury, concussions, um, Autism, people on the autism spectrum. Um, fibromyalgia, I have some bipolar. I also have uh, 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 chronic fatigue, I think I said that. Um, OCD, um, it's very flexible. The whole, the whole system is very flexible. Um, it works really well. 
it doesn't really it's not really concerned with what the your diagnosis is we just know that it helps regulate and reorganize and re-educate your central nervous system so i hope you learned something from this short little video uh and if this sounds good to you or if it sounds like it could benefit you in any way give me a call i'd love to help you out uh i promise to make it uh worth your while uh i work sliding scale with with people so i, I make it affordable to people um i want to see people improve i want to see it help you uh because i really believe in the technology uh, i've seen what it's done firsthand and i'd love to share it with you so don't hesitate call um uh, visit the website and find the number there or shoot me an email on the website at www.myneurobalance.com uh, or email me at john, J-O-N, at myneurobalance.com. Okay? Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you.